Earth is falling. Sounds like a joke, doesn't it? A paradox. Or maybe just a misunderstanding. Because if our planet really were falling, why don't we feel it? Why does everything seem so calm? There's no shaking, no roaring winds, no sense of motion at all. And yet, the ground beneath you is flying through space at over 66,000 miles per hour. So what's going on? Here's the twist. Earth isn't falling down because in space, there is no down. There's no up either. Only movement, only motion through a cosmic sea. And gravity? It doesn't work the way our instincts think it does. So now we have to ask, if gravity is real, why don't planets like Earth just spiral inward, collapsing into the center of space? Why don't they simply fall and vanish? Or maybe they are falling, just not in the way we imagine. Let's slow down for a moment and unravel this cosmic paradox. From the story of a falling apple to the elegant unseen curves of space-time, from the quiet force that pulls oceans and moons to the breathtaking ballet that holds entire galaxies in place. Join me as we fall together into the heart of gravity. Let's begin with something simple, something familiar. An apple falling from a tree. It's such an ordinary moment we barely notice it. But for Isaac Newton, it changed everything. Not because the apple fell, but because of the question it left behind. Is the moon falling too? It sounds strange, but think about it. If gravity pulls the apple straight down to Earth, why doesn't it pull the moon down in the same way? To explore this, Newton imagined something bold. A cannon sitting on top of a mountain so high it reaches beyond the atmosphere. No air, no resistance. Now, fire a cannonball. At low speed, it falls back down. Fire it faster, it travels farther. Faster still, and it arcs even farther away, but at one precise speed, about 7.9 kilometers per second. Something extraordinary happens. The cannonball never touches the ground. It keeps falling, but it keeps missing the Earth. It loops around again and again, falling endlessly, but never landing. This is orbit. Now let's scale it up. Earth becomes the cannonball. The sun becomes the pole. And the only reason Earth doesn't spiral inward is because of that one perfect sideways push. A cosmic shot fired billions of years ago, perhaps at the very birth of the solar system. So imagine for just a moment you are that cannonball, falling forever, but never arriving. What would that feel like? Weightless, free, or trapped in an endless glide, trying to escape something you can never outrun? And here lies the deeper mystery. What really holds us in orbit? Is it just speed? Just motion? Or is there something more? Something hidden? inscribed into the very geometry of space itself? That is where we go next. Imagine this. You're standing in the middle of a wide, open field. You pick up a stone and toss it forward. It arcs through the air and falls to the ground. Throw it harder, it travels farther. But no matter how strong your throw is, gravity always pulls it back. Now picture something very different. You're not on Earth anymore. You're floating in space. No ground, no air, no resistance. You throw that same stone, and this time it doesn't stop. It just keeps going, gliding silently through the void, drawn ever so slightly by the pull of some massive object nearby but never quite reaching it. That is what's happening to Earth. Gravity is the invisible force connecting all things. With mass, it's what makes apples fall. It's what keeps the moon circling Earth. And it's what holds Earth in orbit 
around the sun. But gravity isn't a rope. It doesn't tug like a string from far away. It's more like a subtle tension, a hidden curve woven into the very structure of space itself, a quiet rule that says everything must bend toward everything else. Now think about this. The sun is massive, about 330,000 times heavier than Earth. Its gravitational pull is colossal. By all logic, Earth should be falling straight into it. So why doesn't it? The answer is simple and elegant. Sideways velocity. Earth is moving sideways at roughly 30 kilometers per second. And that motion, that perfect sideways glide, keeps it in a constant fall. A fall that's always missing. It's being pulled in, but it's moving too fast to ever fall straight down. It's like someone running inside a giant bowl. They're always being drawn to the center, but as long as they run fast enough, they stay near the edge, circling, spinning, never falling in. That's Earth, a cosmic dancer orbiting the solar flame, not because it's chained there, but because it's always outrunning its fall at just the right speed. But now, here's the real question. What if that speed changed? What happens? If the dance is interrupted, let's go back to where it all began with Isaac Newton. He helped us picture gravity as an invisible force, a pull drawing objects toward one another. But over two centuries later, Albert Einstein turned that idea upside down so radically that it reshaped how we understand the universe itself. Einstein didn't say gravity pulls. He said something even more astonishing. Gravity isn't a force at all. Instead, it's the shape of space-time. Imagine the universe as a vast, stretched-out fabric. A smooth, flexible sheet. Now place something massive on it, like the sun. It doesn't just sit still. It sinks into the fabric, creating a deep, invisible well. That curve that distortion is gravity. Smaller objects, like Earth, don't get pulled in. They're not being yanked by some force. They're simply sliding, moving along the curves of this warped space. Just like a marble, rolling around the rim of a bowl. The marble wants to move in a straight line, but the curve redirects it over and over again in a graceful, endless spiral. That's what gravity is, in Einstein's view. Not a tug, not a push, just motion along a curved path. A path defined by the shape of the universe itself. And here's something even more mind-bending. Even light, which has no mass, can't escape this warping of space. Starlight bends, not because it's pulled but because it follows the curved lines of distorted space-time. Astronomers have seen this happen. They've watched light bend around massive objects, like the sun. It's called gravitational lensing, and it's one of the most direct confirmations of Einstein's theory. So the next time you look up at the stars, and what you're seeing might not be what it seems, that light may have taken a strange path to reach you, a twisted, arched journey through invisible curves carved into the fabric of the cosmos. It's like looking through a window that was gently bent by gravity itself, a hidden lens shaping how we see the universe. So now the question isn't just, what's pulling us in? It's something deeper. What hidden curves are we gliding along and if the universe really does bend and twist space around us, where could those curves eventually lead? If Earth is falling around the sun, then what about the sun? To answer that, we have to zoom out, way out, because the sun is falling too. It's orbiting something much larger, the center of the Milky Way galaxy. There, hidden deep within the galactic core, lies a supermassive black hole. 
millions of times more massive than the Sun itself, and once every 230 million years or so, the Sun completes a full orbit around that dark heart. Earth, along with the entire solar system, is just along for the ride. But it doesn't end there. The Milky Way, our home galaxy, is also falling. It's racing through the cosmos at over 1.3 million miles per hour, heading toward a vast collection of galaxies known as the Virgo Cluster. And the Virgo Cluster? It too is being pulled, drawn toward something even more mysterious, a region of space called the Great Attractor. We don't know exactly what it is, but we know it's powerful. So powerful, it's dragging tens of thousands of galaxies toward it, including ours. At this point, any sense of stillness starts to dissolve. There is no center, no fixed ground, no place that stands still. Everything is falling, but not in chaos, not in collision. Everything is falling in orbit, like a cosmic pinball machine with no edges and no bottom. Every planet, every stars, every galaxy. A marble gliding along invisible grooves in space. A web of gravity where motion never ends. Where nothing truly rests and nothing is ever truly lost. You and I were part of that motion, not just circling the sun, but caught inside a layered spiral of spirals, falling through a universe that never stops moving. So now we ask, if everything is falling, are we spiraling towards some inevitable end? Or maybe the universe is something else entirely, a silent symphony where falling is not a failure, but the oldest dance of all. That question, why don't planets fall? It sounds simple, even naive, but it's not. It's a doorway, an invitation into a new way of thinking, a world where falling doesn't mean crashing down. It means becoming part of something deeper, something graceful, something eternal. We are falling, but not into darkness, not into chaos. We're gliding, following gentle curves, carved by the very shape of space-time. Every planet is a dancer, spinning around its origin. Every galaxy, a flowing symphony, a melody etched across the cosmos. And here's the most beautiful part. You, right now, sitting there watching this, you're falling too, right alongside it all. Maybe falling isn't about losing control. Maybe it's the way the universe holds us, keeps us moving, keeps us connected. A quiet rhythm that never ends. So, what do you think? If this journey sparked something in you, if you've ever wondered about your place in this vast, moving universe, consider subscribing to Astro. Let's keep asking the biggest questions, starting with the simplest ones, together.